Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, the event is recorded, so please mute your microphones when you are not speaking. Please turn on your video and have a full name showing so our presenters can see their audience. Um, the rules of engagement for the panel program will be explained prior to the first panelist starting their remarks. Help facilitate connections by providing your name and point of contact information in the public chat channel. Also include what you offer or seek from the TPC community. The chat will be saved before the end of the meeting. It will be cleaned up of any superfluous conversation and shared to attendees in an email tomorrow. All event registrants will receive a link to the recorded program in a few days. All right, I'll begin the program now. Okay. So good afternoon. I am Emma Tukes. I am the executive chair uh, for American Warriors and the facilitator for the Purple Connection. This event is hosted and sponsored by, by Tubes Consulting. David and I are connectors, coaches, and consultants in, in Tubes Consulting, and we thank you all for being here. Welcome especially to those who this is your first Purple Connection event. For our new attendees, thank you for, uh, thank the person who invited you as they felt that you might benefit or contribute to this community. To our regulars, it's good to see you again. Next slide. Here is the agenda. I'll first do an introduction to American Warriors and the Purple Connection, and then introduce our educational networking program. It'll comprise of a panel program um, with organizational representatives in three categories. We'll have a Q&A with the panel and the community, followed by a transition tip speaker. I'll start wrapping it up with how to get involved with American Warriors, give some future events announcements, and then wrap up the meeting. All right, so an introduction to American Warriors. American Warriors is a special interest group of the ACA Business Club. And uh, I am the uh, co-founder of American Warriors and the executive chair. The Business Club is a private club and it has the philosophy that business flows out of relationships. So people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So members of the club are committed to creating solid connections by learning and practicing the fundamentals of strategic networking and relationship building. American Warriors are club members who have an affinity with or support those who have served our country in military or public service. The mission statement of American Warriors is that we provide educational and networking opportunities for, for patriotic citizens who are leaders in business, and we support the transition into private and public sector business of active duty and first responders. The Purple Connection is one vehicle that the American Warriors use to fulfill its mission. Next slide. Okay, the challenges of transitioning from the military is a very well-researched problem. It's evident by the multitude of military support nonprofits and community organizations that provide support to address them. Driving Community Impact was a white paper published in April of 2015 by the IVMF of Syracuse University. They determined in this study that uh, after thousands of, of surveys and several years of research, that the leading gap of services was not that there was a lack of them, but that there was a lack of connectedness of the services and support. Very often transitioning military will feel a loss of purpose. They'll feel isolated or misunderstood or feel overwhelmed for their need of help, but they feel disconnected or lack affinity to the people and culture of their new environment. So how do you solve it? You create a partnership of stakeholders who have a common goal for supporting American warriors. The Purple Connection is a community of partnered stakeholders with a common focus of service, support, and care so that we can effectively address the challenges of transition. So what's up with the name? There's actually two reasons for it. In government jargon, the color for joint is purple. When our military is operating overseas on a deployment, 
that environment is comprised of a multitude of seemingly disparate entities with varying purposes, but they have a common purpose through the operation that unites and focuses their effort. The Purple Connection is an attempt to replicate this type of joint environment to support the American warrior in transition. Another reason is that when you combine the colors of red and blue, you get the color purple. So in the purple connection, we are facilitating the connection of individuals who, I, who identify more closely to either the military community or the military support and business community. And when they come together, it's a purple connection. Here are the vision and mission of the Purple Connection. We create awareness to enable access and then empower action through collaboration and encouragement to expedite reintegration, support growth and healing and enable opportunities. We do this by regularly bringing together community experts and facilitating connections through educational networking. Here's the rules of engagement for our panel program and networking. Each participant will have eight minutes to deliver their remarks. There will be a timer. The time can be stopped short and given back for Q&A specific to that panelist or used up entirely by the panelists. However, when the timer goes off, please wrap up and we'll move on to the next presenter. Once, once each panelist has spoken, There'll be 15 minutes for Q&A with the Purple Connection community. If you're uncomfortable with public speaking or want to remain anonymous with your question, you can private chat or public chat your question and I will ask it for you. Please be succinct in your questions and direct them to a specific panelist or to the community if it is a more general question. If you have a complicated question, you may ask it to discover if there is a subject matter expert in the community on the call but if a response would take longer than two minutes to address it, then I would recommend that you follow up after the event. After the Q&A, there'll be eight minutes for our transition tip speaker who will provide an educational presentation for paradigms or process shifts or recommend uh, resources that apply to the topic of the day, which for uh, those who um, are part of it is legal matters. After the presentations, if you have not already, share in the public chat your point of contact information, how you serve or need support from the community, and the chat will be saved and shared um, in a future email so you can follow up with who you like as you like. I will do event announcements and then wrap up the event. All right, so first in our lineup is our veteran entrepreneur. Hugh Stewart is an attorney and a prior service Marine. He owns his own law office and has been active in the military support community in various ways to include fishing activities. Keith, are you on? Yep, I got unmuted, I think. Okay, yep. All right, let me set the timer and then you can start your remarks. You can start. Well, thank you, Major, for inviting me to speak today. Um, thank you to the panel for being here to listen to. Uh, well, let me start by saying that in 1989, I graduated from high school. So I'm going to date myself here a little bit. So if you can do the math and figure out I'm 50 this year um, and uh, graduated from high school. And I was told and taught by my teachers, my parents, my family that when you graduate from high school, you go to college, you go to college, you get a good education because then you get a good job. The problem I had was that college at that point in my life was not for me. So I got speaking with a very nice group of gentlemen and one lady that happened to be Marine Corps recruiters. And uh, they thought that I would be a great Marine. And on top of that, my ASVAB sport allowed me to do anything in the Marine Corps I wanted. So of course, I chose to be an 0331 machine gunner in the Marine Corps Infantry because that makes perfect sense. At least it did when I was 19 years old. Um, after serving eight years, I had de I decided that it was time to, to disengage and move on from my military time. And um, I, at the time, was living in Washington State, relocated back to New York where I was from, and I 
always had the idea of starting my own business that I wanted to be in control of my own destiny. And maybe that was from eight years of, of taking orders. But um, in any event, I opened a welding company in New York, contract welding company, and it was the wrong time, the wrong place, the wrong business model. And um, I was speaking with a co my cousin who was actually an attorney in the Kansas City area. And he said, you know, why don't you come down this way? and at least go back to college and get your bachelor's degree. So I did, um, went to KU, finished my bachelor's degree. And then because my grades were good enough and my, my uh, LSAT score was good enough, I went on to law school. Um, at the end of law school, I went to UMKC Law, uh, graduated in spring of 2006. I was speaking with um, Judge Moffmer, who is a federal magistrate judge in the Western District of Missouri. And we talked about different options for me. And he said, he said, I'll be honest with you, Heath, you with your military background, with your life experience, the obvious answer for you is to open your own firm and, and go for it. He said, Kansas City is a unique legal market in that while there are big law firms, there are small soul, solo practitioners who make a very good living and make big differences in the law. Uh, that inspired me. I, I hung my shingle. And if, you know, for those in the legal community, you'll know what that means. It's just, you know, I started my law practice. Um, and what I learned very quickly was, even though I was Heath Stewart, the Marine, the attorney, you know, uh, long life experiences that didn't generate business. And what I had to learn and what I had to adapt and, and using what the Marine Corps had taught me about, we adapt, we overcome was how do I advertise this business? How do I make relationships with people so that they will come to me to have me help them through their worst times in their life, the scariest times in their lives. Um, the first thing I learned was that advertising is very expensive. Um, so I joined a business networking group. And in that business networking group, I was able to make relationships with other business owners. And those other business owners began driving business to me because of the relationships we'd established. Um, that, of course, led to other business networking groups, which in those groups, I met individuals that are, are professionals in, in internet marketing, which is the primary mode of advertising that I use today. So 15 years have gone by. Um, I've been lucky enough to have helped thousands of people with legal difficulties. I primarily practice in two areas, criminal defense and family law. And sometimes there's a, a nexus between those two, if you'll pardon my joke. Uh, and early in my career, and I, I think that there was a lot of that hard charging Marine in me where, that, where I was overly aggressive in cases that really needed a softer touch or cases that really needed to be massaged. And as I've aged in the law and matured personally, um, I probably rely on my military mindset on a day-to-day -day basis with the understanding that there are some times when charging into that ambush is probably not the right thing to do. And instead, let's sit back, approach the issue collaboratively, and see if we can get this individual, if he's a veteran, into a veteran's treatment court. If, is there a way to mediate? Is there a way to find an alternative dispute resolution to the issue? And that has driven more business into my practice and resulted in far more um, positive reviews on Google and a lot more referrals from former clients. There is... Uh, there are many different ways that, that we as veterans can be entrepreneurs and, and 
find a path in this world with that that ties our military training and our military experience to our our civilian career. And um, I know at the major said at the very beginning that I uh, I had done a lot of work with veterans and I have. Um, she mentioned fishing. What we 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 need to resurrect this. What we used to do a benefit bass tournament every year, um, and and we would generate thousands of dollars um, to be donated to a veterans charity. Um, and that is something that we are going to. I am personally going to be bringing back. So, um, with about a minute left, I would wrap up my remarks by saying that look at these veterans and understand that you know they've been they've been taught we've been taught how to how to take orders but there's also a, a big drive in the military for personal initiative and because of that personal initiative many of us are very qualified to start different types of businesses and if there's anybody that would have any questions about how you know the the, the law and how i built my practice i'd be happy to go into more depth if there's any legal questions i can answer i would also be happy to do that and with that i'll i'll give my time back to the panel all right very good i figure most of the people talking today are are practice in a time constrained remark so being lawyers um, very good. You had like 15 seconds left. <laughs> um, so we will, we will move on and introduce our next speaker. Okay, our next speaker is representing a military support nonprofit. Uh, Rich Karasi is a retired Army colonel. He'll be speaking to us today about military matters which is an organization where he is the senior military advisor. This is one of quite a few other um, organizations and military support activities that Rich uh, supports, but I will let him make his remarks and tell us about that. Okay. Good afternoon, Rich. Yeah, I got you. Uh, All right, good. Good. Good, every, good afternoon, everybody. I just uh, dropped something into the chat, um, which I hope pops up. Uh, and that's the, uh, the flyer, our Military Matters flyer. Uh, one caveat as I begin, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV, and I did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Uh, military Matters is uh, it's a 501c3. It's a, we, it's a support organization, a nonprofit, and it was built about six or seven years ago uh, when it started to uh, fill the gap in uh, legal services uh, that can be provided to uh, veterans, uh, and uh, military folks who need legal services outside of what your JAGs can do, because you know your JAGs can't handle civil law and divorce and all that kind of stuff, and uh, and fill in that gap that uh, uh, to provide legal services that could not otherwise be gotten um, uh, easily. Uh, since since the program started, we've uh, gotten almost fifteen hundred referrals. Uh, there's been about uh, 7,100 or so estimated pro bono hours, and we valued that out because somebody loves statistics at about a million and a half bucks of pro, pro bono volunteer time uh, since, program since program inception. We have about 150, 160 pro bono attorneys on the, uh, on the staff, um, and uh, it actually, uh, actually works quite well. It's been quite successful, quite well received. In fact, uh, there's an effort uh, currently that we're working on to build a model to uh, put this out nationally to other bar foundations uh, across the across the nation. One of the, the, the country's major uh, legal foundations, legal associations, uh, asked us to do that for them. So we're working on that now. Um, locally, the easiest thing to do is uh, look at the pamphlet that I that I linked up. If it doesn't show up in the link, I'll relink it. Um, the military matters, uh, footprint, uh, because it's related to the bar association when the bar association was founded many, many years ago, um, uh, they decided they were going to cover, um, uh, in, uh, in Kansas, uh, uh, Platt and, uh, Platt and, and, uh, Johnson County, Kansas, 
and in Missouri, Clay, Jackson, Cass, Ray, Lafayette, and Johnson County, I'm sorry, in Missouri, Clay, uh, Jackson, uh, Cass, Ray, Lafayette, and Johnson, Missouri, and then again, uh, and, and Platt, I'm sorry, got confused there. And then in, the, in Kansas, Wyandotte, and Johnson, that's a nine county service area. Um, anybody requesting legal services uh, has to have a residence within that service area. Um, and uh, I don't make the rules, I'm just the advisor. And so that's why that footprint is that way. Um, the way to get legal assistance from the Military Matters Project is to work through one of our community uh, or referral partners. And that's the After Action Network, uh, Kansas Legal Services, uh, the United Way Veterans Navigator, United Way 211, and then ask the, the Veterans Navigator and then ask the Veterans Navigator to uh, get you a referral to Military Matters, uh, the Kansas VA Medical Center, uh, the specific five digit number to once you get into their uh, system is uh, in the pamphlet. And then the Veterans Community Project, you probably know those as the tiny, house, the tiny homes people. Um, uh, and then before I go, uh, let me uh, just put a little plug in here for our, uh, what's known as our VETA run, that's B-E-T-E-R-U-N, -E uh, uh, and that's our, uh, our 5K uh, running event. And we've got a, 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 you can run it or walk it. We've got an event for the children. Um, we're gonna have all kinds of stuff out there. And uh, the, the folks from Horses and Heroes are bringing a couple of miniature horses. I think Henry will be there again. And uh, that's always a lot of fun. It's down, it's gonna be down on the grounds of the World War I uh, Memorial uh, up on the grass there by the parking lot. That's where we'll begin. Uh, again, the registration uh, is on our website. Uh, that's uh, HTTPS militarymatterskc.org. And again, that's all in the chat that I just posted up for you there. Um, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them now or later or whenever. Uh, my information's in the chat, along with that link to the to the post. Uh, Emma, you did want me to say a brief word about uh, about veterans courts, didn't you? Yes, uh, Heath mentioned it a little bit as far yeah. as his remarks, but yes, go ahead and make a mention of that um, that resource here in yeah. Metro and in others if you know of those. Yeah, because we uh, do have people from other locations on the call. Yeah, veterans, veterans courts are, are let, let's make sure we understand. I'm going to put a full stop here. There's no relationship uh, uh, directly between veterans courts and military matters. They're two separate things. I happen to be a veterans court mentor in, uh, in Clay County. In the Kansas City area, there are veterans courts or veterans, more precisely, veterans treatment courts in Clay County, uh, Jackson County, um, uh, they're starting one in Wyandotte County. It's not up yet. Platt County, Missouri, and Johnson County, Missouri, and Kansas City Met. The Kansas City Metropolitan Court System under Judge Artie Bland has got a uh, has got a veterans court. Now, veterans treatment courts. Please note that the word treatment is in there. Uh, are part of the national uh, uh, substance abuse system. Part of the national substance abuse. Uh, treatment court programs. In fact, in, in Missouri, they're all administered by the Missouri uh, uh, Substance Abuse. Oh, golly, I just forgot the acronym. They used to call it MADCAP. Now they call it MATCAP. Missouri, abu Missouri Abuse Treatment. Oh, Sean, maybe you remember. I don't. Um, the, the, the thing about a veteran's treatment course is just because you're a veteran, you don't get to go to veteran's treatment court. Okay. You have to have uh, certain categories of offenses. You have to uh, be uh, substance dependent at the same time. Uh, your crimes have to qualify. And it's a decision between the prosecutor, the judge, and the treatment court team whether to accept you into veterans court or not. So it's, it's not that if you're a veteran, you get to go to veterans court because you got a traffic ticket. It doesn't work that way. Okay. A veterans court is a contract between a justice involved veteran and the court of jurisdiction, right? So it's not commonly understood that way, but that's the way it is. Uh, if you go to any of the county courthouses uh, and you type in the word veterans treatment court, I know the Clay County 
website, Clay County Circuit 7 website. It's got a particularly good description on there. So does the Jackson County one, and that'll straighten you out about veterans courts. And if I took a second or two longer, Emma, please forgive me. No, that was really good. Um, you've got about 25 seconds left in your eight minutes, and that was a good explanation. Um, oh, good. In that case, Madam Chairman, I yield back. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap up um, with, uh, with Rich's remarks, and I will uh, introduce our third presenter. All right. Our third presenter is the military friendly company representative. Kathy Lucas has a son-in-law who is an active duty army officer. She also has other family members who have also served in the military. Today, she is representing Legal Shield as a business benefits, um, sorry, business benefits specialist. Gosh, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> So good to see you, Kathy. Uh, your uh, time is on now. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good to be with you. Um, as Emma said, um, I have a very extensive military family and people have said, why didn't you go in the military? And I said, well, basically, I live boot camp every day of my life. So I really didn't need to go in and have anybody else yelling at me. So um, but just so glad to be with you. I, I will also say that I am not an attorney, but for the last nine years, I have been working in this business, helping people. And I, Emma and I got connected right after she retired and we, we met and we chatted and the services that we offer were very somewhat similar to what was the military experience, but didn't have outside of that. So um, I do actually do quite a bit of work with military folks, but today, if you're not familiar with Legal Shield, what I want to share with you is that we are a 50 years old, 50 year old company that has been doing uh, making legal services available to families, individuals, entrepreneurs, um, you know, employer groups, small businesses, commercial drivers. What we've done to the legal system is make it affordable accessible and that's through what is what we'll call a subscription model or shared economy so you're all familiar with like uber netflix you pay a small monthly premium you get access to these services well that's the way legal shield works but what we do then is we wrap the legal services around different plans that support individuals families entrepreneurs in what they need in their everyday life. So it could be access for an entrepreneur to getting started and getting incorporated to uh, a family needing to get their estate planning done or updated uh, to a small business. I mean, we're all familiar with the challenges that have come from this last year and a half where small business owners are struggling big time to figure out how to handle remote workers, all the laws and legislations that are changing. And, you know, when attorneys and no disrespect to attorneys, but when they start at like $200 an hour, that takes that off the table for many of these people to be able to afford on a regular ongoing basis access to that attorney. So that's what Legal Shield does is make it affordable and timely. So if you're especially a business owner and you've got a critical situation going on, maybe you, you have to fire somebody or you've got a situation happening you want to get to that resource right away. And Legal Shield has a model in place that says they will call you back within four business hours. We elevate our business owners so that we call them back even sooner. So if something's happening and, and in critical mode, you can actually get to that legal resource right away. So what I specialize and I focus in is helping those entrepreneurs get started, get incorporated. It also, um, I work with small business owners and, and I say small because I'm not going after typically, you know, two, 300 employees and bigger, but the smaller business owner to help them be able to protect that business while they grow it and stay out of trouble. And then also help them if they have employees, because it's a very hot job market right now. And people are searching and looking for what's in what they get when they get hired 
this is a great way to offer additional benefits that have no direct cost to that company. Uh, I will say that um, I have helped several military business owners, which has been very fulfilling for me to be able to not only give back a little bit, but also be able to help them in, in you know, an affordable way. Um, we also cover the United States, all of Canada, and we're in the UK. So no matter where something may be happening to us, you have a resource you know, that covers you in all of those areas. And I am proud to say, like I said, it's been 50 years uh, that we've been in business. I've been doing this nine and a half, almost 10 years now. I came from corporate America. I you know, am familiar with that corporate box, similar to the military box of what to do, when to do it, how to do it, when to go to the bathroom, all that stuff. Well, I've actually helped several folks through an interview practice interview process to say, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to help you as you acclimate into the civilian world. And, and that's been fun too. So it's a, a way for me to give back to those military folks, as well as help them going forward. So that's really all I have today, Emma. I'm sure that was not eight minutes. <laughs> all right. That was about five. So there's three okay. more minutes in your eight. And I, I do have a question specific to you. I, I would like you to speak to the career opportunities. So uh, being a military friendly company, I know that um, Legal Shield is a benefit to the uh, members of AUSA, the Army Association. Um, and, uh, but as far as uh, career opportunities in Legal Shield, what might some of those be? Well, that's a great question. Um, so for those that are looking to be an entrepreneur, maybe they don't want to go into that corporate uh, environment. This is a great way to start a business. Um, I am a 1099. I have my own business. I've incorporated. But it's a great way to go and explore becoming your own business owner. You can focus in many different areas. I've got actually one gentleman that was in the military, has become a commercial driver, and he actually calls on drivers and uh, trucking companies to offer the plan to them. So there's an opportunity to get started in business. It's not like a franchise where there's a major startup fee, but there's a small fee and then there's the ability to focus in certain areas. It's nice because you decide how much you want to work. If you want to make this your full-time career or part-time, that's entirely up to you. There's also lots of support. I happen to be a field trainer for the state of Kansas. So I'm here. I'm, I'm always available. I take calls usually up till nine o'clock at night, but um, so I'm here to help and support in any way. And if people would like to know, I'll put my information um, in the group chat that they can reach out to me. Okay, we've got about a minute and 10 seconds. Does somebody have a quick question for Kathy? Because we can just roll into our community Q&A now. All right, well, why don't, why don't we go ahead and do that? We have a 15 minute Q&A with the panelists as well as those on the call. So whether you have a question that's kind of general in nature for transitioning military or one that is specific to the topic of the day, which is legal matters, now is the time to ask, see what uh, resources are available in the Purple Connection for the people who are on the call. You always want us to meet somebody to say, you know what, it's not me, but I know someone. And so uh, now is the time to um, do the Q&A. Okay, I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. Who has a question for the panel or the community? Hey, I'm Tom Williams, I have a question. All right. Uh, for, the, for the attorneys in the group, this is me, I'm Tom. Uh, one of the associations, military association I belong with, has a every year they publish a list of attorneys that provide advice and assistance to members, like AUSA or Military Officers Association or Non-Commissioned Officers Association. So are you guys affiliated with those organizations? Because usually they only list one attorney in the Kansas City metro area that is affiliated with 
military, that association that provides a service uh, to military members, either active or retired. So I'm just wondering if, if, if you belong to those organizations or if, if that's a way to expand uh, the opportunities you provide to veterans. Well, I can respond uh, for me. That's, that's one way to make money. Uh, making connections is one way to make money, and especially in the legal business, networking is important. Uh, as for my law office, uh, no, that's not the case. In fact, most of the people that know me will tell you that they have a hard time getting me to associate. Um, I spend a lot of time working, and um, I spend a lot of time on my cases, and when I'm not spending time on my cases, I'm typically spending time with my friends and family. Um, so, yeah. Those attorneys probably that's that's part of their business model, but that's not that's not all of them. What do you have to say for that uh, question, Heath, being another attorney on the call? Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm not a part of any um, any of those associations either. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, and I'm sorry, Mr. Williams, I don't know what associations in particular that you're talking about. If they, if you wanted to put the name of the association in the chat, that'd be great. I'd be happy to look into it. Um, what I've always done is on my client intake sheet, I have a, a spot where you can mark whether you're a veteran or not. I've typically given um, hourly rate discounts to veterans um, just as just as my normal practice. But, but as far as a specific military association i mean personally i'm in the marine corps league but that's uh that has never been anything that i've used to gain business that was more about being around former marines well i'm i'm not so sure it's, it's designed to as a business advertising thing as it is a if you are a member of an organization they are telling you that a member of our organization is an attorney. And because of that connection, uh, you may want to contact them, uh, organization member to organization member, if you need some legal assistance, as opposed to having to search or research for the, the purple organization that y'all are, are associated with now. I mean, their name is out there. And so you have a veteran, it's if you remember the AUSA or the Military Officers Association, MOAA, for example, or AFMA or any other organization, you know, they'll say, hey guys, we have an attorney that's a fellow member of our organization, a veteran, him or herself. And if you need legal assistance, you may want to contact them just as a reference or a starting point. Uh, that was kind of what I was driving behind this. So. Okay, that, that's a good question, Tom. But I think it's something that um, here in Kansas City, we have a, a chapter for AUSA, Kansas City AUSA. And um, so one of the things that we offer to our community partners who are our organizational members of the chapter um, is an opportunity to uh, get some marketing when they sponsor an event. Um, and they do get recognized on our website as far as being a community partner, but it's just exposure and an association to the community that they support the chapter's uh, mission. So I think that's probably similar to what you were saying. We don't, you know, we don't support um, um, distributing member lists or anything like that. People kind of have to network and create those relationships on their own. So who else, who else might have a question for the community or our, or our speakers? I have a question. Uh, what is the consensus on uh, a post-social social? Uh, there's a lot of people who are vaccinated, I'm sure, and others who are taking advantage of free COVID-19 testing. Um, traditionally, a lot of the business that I've brought in the door has been through personal networking. Um, 
I'm happy to video conference with you all, but I'm also happy to meet out with you all sometime at a establishment of some repute mm -hmm. and to, you know, have conversations, see if there's some sparks that fly that aren't electronic. <laughs> Great question. That's actually something that we um, encourage. Uh, the tagline of the Purple Connection is to create awareness, enable access and empower action. So there are other opportunities to connect with members of the community. Um, those who attend get access to the chat channel information. Those who register for the event get access to the recording. So anything that gets said, they get um, uh, you know, access to. But the, the benefits to being able to follow up specifically with members of the community are through attending. And um, I have something I'll talk about a little bit later called TPC referrals, which is kind of um, a uh, opportunity to kind of do a focused networking uh, session with me and up to three other members of the TPC community and get a, a chance to do some more intentional networking and asks um, for support. So yeah, anybody who's willing to be followed up on, use the chat channel. That's what it's for. And I, I think for the most part, everybody has uh, provided some information there. So reach out to each other as, uh, as follow up after the event. Good question, Sean. Sean, I'll be happy to meet you if you pay, <laughs> which is rare. <laughs> All right, so here's a question, just a general one. So both Sean and Heath are, are practicing attorneys and um, the legal matters, uh, or the military matters group provides support to legal issues. What do you find to be the most prevalent uh, type of cases that transitioning military who aren't trying to start up their own business, but just in general, uh, personal legal issues that just are the most prevalent in what you are addressing in your businesses or in military matters. Guys, let me let me start this one off. Family law. Absolutely. Our our experience in military matters. I've got the stats if anybody wants them. Uh, family law. Family law is number one. Uh, minor crim and, and landlord tenant kind of work their way in there. But uh, if you ask what the primary uh, what the primary focus is, it's so family law. That's what we're asked most for. Okay. Do you guys in a big area? Or no. A big area that we see, um, quite honestly, it's it's tied to legal, but is really around identity theft. Um, we see a lot of that in the military. They're targeted because they're they're mobile and. Their personal personal information is out there, so I actually work with a group that, that that's their client base, and they offer them this ID shield to be able to you know have some peace of mind. But that's a big area. The numbers um, from the FTC show that the military has been targeted for several years now in a row in a big way. Keith and Sean, you both do family law cases. Do you find that to be a prevalent case in your load? Well, um, I would say that there's not a court in this land that veterans are not in. And um, there is not a single way to screw a person over that veterans are not the victims of. Um, with that said, um, most of my business involves civil litigation and that civil litigation and some of the criminal defense winds up having impacts on the family. And so that's why organizations like um, Military Matters and the, the legal assistance organization are so important is because, you know, we, we really want to make sure those family issues are resolved if they're, you know, just a minor thing that the court can intervene in and get resolved for a family. And we really want to take care of those minor criminal cases so that, you know, just a, a bad mistake or something that could be attributed to a mental illness or a substance abuse condition can be resolved without injuring a person long term. Um, but I would say, by and large, the majority of my business involves complex 
towards complex crimes. And that's where somebody has created either a defective product and mass marketed it, and veterans fell, uh, fell to it. Um, another one would be pharmaceuticals. Veterans have been identified by pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies as a vulnerable class along with children and the elderly. And so fraudulent materials are pushed on them and their doctors. Um, and I find that often I'm having to deal with a veteran where we have whatever their legal issue is, and then we have an underlying chemical problem. Um, and then there's the cr criminal aspect that, that she described. Um, veterans are a juicy target. They've got money, they've got resources, they've got access to resources. And so uh, crimes perpetrated against veterans are, are very prevalent. That's unfortunate. What about you, Heath? And Emma, and Emma and panel, to, to clarify, when I say family law, I'm not just talking about divorces. I mean, you know, there are custody issues and other mm -hmm. issues that fall under that category of family law. And when we add up all those subcategories, that's why I say family law is the number one set of requests that we get. Sure. Okay. A lot of a lot of uh, paternity issues, uh, divorce. Um, then obviously that that transitions into child custody, child support. Um, and then, you know, the sad thing is a lot of those cases come directly from the criminal courts because the veteran is untreated PTSD and there are domestic violence issues, there are substance abuse issues. Um, so at least with my practice, often I will be assigned or be retained through, and Johnson County, Kansas does have a veterans treatment court, by the way. Yes, they do. Um, so I'll I'll be I'll I'll get my client will be in the veterans treatment court first, and then transition into a divorce or um, you know child custody issues because of the issues that arose in the in the criminal court. And then the only other area that we haven't talked about um, are orders of protection, um, which typically, mm -hmm. um, at least in my practice. Oh, um, a military spouse is seeking an order of protection from, again, typically it's untreated PTSD. Uh, and, and what I've been able to develop over the years is a, a network of very good mental health professionals to help these veterans with PTSD, because that is such an, it's an I'm kind of I'm stumbling over my words. I apologize. It's a, it's an area of medical practice that really needs a lot more um, research and development in in effective treatments. And I've been I've been very lucky to have been introduced to one of the nation's leading expert counselors on PTSD, and and he's a regular part of my practice when I'm dealing with. What veteran that has PTSD, or at least I believe he has PTSD, and we get that counseling started. Let's get through that criminal case. Let's get let's do everything we can do to maintain your relationship with the children. All right, very good, good. So we'll wrap up on the Q and A uh, portion of the program, and I will transition to our transition tip speaker. All right, our last presenter of the day is our uh, transition tips speaker. Uh, to teach us today is Sean Lee. He is an army veteran who is now an attorney. He's going to speak to us uh, um, about some various areas of legal matters that may present various challenges to those in transition. Sean, you're up. Well, thank you for having me. and and. Good day to everybody. I'll try and make this an interesting video conference because I know we're pretty deep in, so people may be nodding off. Um, <laughs> generally, I try and approach these things where, from the perspective of what is interesting to the crowd. And this is a business meeting, so I'm going to try and help you predict what is going to happen in the future and how you can monetize it. Uh, first and foremost, I would tell you that veterans, again, are a juicy target. Um, there's no there's no shortage of work for attorneys when it comes to veterans. It's how much can we conceivably get to and can we do it without bankrupting our clients? 
Uh, I'm an attorney and I, I'm licensed in Missouri, Kansas, the federal courts of Western District of Missouri, the District of Kansas, and I'm accredited with the Department of Veterans Affairs. I'm also the associate producer of a film called No Greater Love. Uh, you can pull it up on Amazon and watch it tonight. And I think it's a good depiction of our country at war. Um, finally, I'd also like to plug uh, the veteran 5K that Rich mentioned, because uh, if we all took a little bit more of our exercise medicine, I think this world would be a happier place. Um, now, in terms of my experience, uh, I, have, I have fought wars in two countries as an enlisted infantryman. I have fought battles in our state and our federal courtrooms, and I have fought battles in our boardrooms and before the legislature. And what I can tell you is that our nation's veterans are need of, in need of legislative and administrative revolution. We need a lot of change, and that's normal. Um, a lot of my work involves veterans who are trying to transition from the military successfully to being a veteran. And sometimes that can take years. In fact, most of the time it takes years. Um, it's a culture change, no different than moving from one country to a country to another. In terms of civil litigation, I can tell you that the only remedy most of the time that people will actually get is the one that they can afford. And so when I go into civil courts, I'm typically dealing with somebody who has been injured by a person, a product, a business, a business model. Um, I'm typically trying to take a person who has been broken some way and trace it back to something that we can conceivably get them some money back on. Sometimes that's a product, sometimes that's a drug, sometimes that's another person. Um, in the past, I have predicted uh, class action lawsuits that are pending in the District of Connecticut regarding discharge upgrades, and we'll talk about that later. In our criminal courts, I started out with a felony case involving a veteran who had undiagnosed mental illness and who ran afoul of the law in a violent case. And we were able to show that underlying medical conditions had been left untreated and mistreated. And that was one of my first cases. Now fast forward eight years and I'm still dealing with this in our courts because our criminal justice system is in need of desperate uh, revision and review. Uh, guardianships are a part of my practice. They're not the majority of my practice, but there's times where veterans just can't take care of themselves anymore. And I typically refer that out to attorneys who do practice in guardianships. Um, discharge upgrades, that's basically where you got fired. You don't think you should have been fired. Um, the primary uh, elements of proving a discharge upgrade are that it was improper or it was um, inequitable. Improper means they didn't follow the rules when they were discharging you. Inequitable means, well, yeah, maybe you did something wrong, but you didn't deserve to lose your benefits over it. There's uh, a lot of people who want discharge upgrades. Some of them, they don't deserve them. They should have been fired. Being a veteran is a status, you know, and it's not a status for people who don't serve honorably. But there's also a lot of people who exhibited symptoms of mental illness and of combat related uh, injuries. And those symptoms manifested themselves in criminality. And those are the cases where you need to take a careful look at the underlying investigation and put forth an application for a discharge upgrade. Now, what I will tell you is that my, my clientele uh, comes from all walks of life at this point. There are veterans in Congress, there are veterans in our prisons. And something that they all have in common is they tried to serve this country. Um, I will also tell you that, you know, when it comes to being an attorney, I want you to imagine how hard it is in this day and age of misinformation to prove something is a fact. We can't agree on what facts are. Uh, if somebody has seen too much advertising to the contrary, I could have all the facts in the world. I'm not going to convince them otherwise. So all, everyone here, you need to be aware that veterans are living through a constitutional crisis. Um, something that you often hear in television is people object to the introduction of hearsay. You know, that's hearsay. We object. Well, 
hearsay is an out of court statement. If the courts are closed and all the courts are operating by video conference, then there's nothing in our courts but hearsay. So a lot of decisions are being handed down, but you know, necessarily we have to keep processing justice, but they're not being processed properly. There is a degree of miscommunication that is occurring, and that degree of miscommunication is going to have to hit our appellate courts. And that's gonna have a real, a, a real bottleneck effect. I'm sitting in a law library next to our appellate courts. And what I can tell you is that all of the people who are going to deserve some revision of justice may not be able to get it. Uh, finally, I would tell you to be wary, wary of the future that, that is held for veterans. You know, we fought for some ideals and for our constitution and we, forgot, or we fought for the American way of life. And what I would tell you is that I'm concerned about the future of our, our uh, nation's veterans. Uh, what kind of justice do you think that you will get from students raised in video school, looking at video evidence and putting it forward in video courts? You're not gonna get due process. And justice, if we've been uh, studious about war, is an essential element of human life, no less than air or water or food. So um, as far as what I can do, I'm here to fight some big fights. I have uh, studiously studied the law since transitioning from being an infantryman, but I still apply an infantry mentality. I like to take ground and I like to hold ground. And that is what I'm hoping some of the people here do, today will do is they will come up with a way and uh, the, the finances for it to go out and fight some real fights for the American way of life and for veterans. And with that, I yield it back. All right, thank you very much. Perfect, as far as your time management, I kind of expected that. Um, we'll move on and uh, thank you to Sean and our other presenters for providing remarks, helping us learn something today and uh, bring up the slides and I'll start wrapping this up. Um, for those of you who are interested in continuing to participate more intentionally in facilitated conversations of some of the topics that were maybe introduced today, I invite you to become a member of the ACA Business Club and um, become an American Warrior. Uh, some of the benefits of becoming a member of the club is you have access to any club facility that we have, whether it's here in Kansas City or in other parts of the country where we have a facility. We have over 20 interest groups where American Warriors is only but one. You can join a business development team and you have access to all of the organized and sponsored events of the club, whether they're virtual or in-person events and um, access to the directory so that you know who people are in other locations and also within your own clubs um, that you have local access to. There are events and opportunities for learning and connecting um, every day of the week, every week. And there's leadership opportunities at various levels, depending on your uh, kind of bandwidth and capacity for, for becoming a leader in a team group or a club. So the Purple Connection is this event, and um, there's a Strengths Profile Workshop. Both of these events are ones that I organize and conduct uh, on a routine basis through my company, Tubes Consulting. The American Warriors Discussion Group is a routine American Warriors meeting that we do um, each fourth Thursday. It can be done um, in person or at the Oberlin Park Club. Um, we have a semi-annual event that, where the um, inaugural event for it was just last month, the American Warriors Social, which includes a guest speaker program and the American Warriors Executive Committee and the American Warriors Club committees for um, for facilities that have the um, American Warriors group. Those are all opportunities to engage. So here are just some of the details for some of these future events that I mentioned. The American Warriors discussion group is next week. Our uh, topic of the day is going to be financial matters. And um, it's kind of like a mastermind for everybody who attends, we just get perspective and insight and ideas of what do these words actually mean to you. and you'd be surprised what some people have to say about them because of where they are in transition, where they are in life or business. The Intro to Strengths Profile is every th first Thursday of each month. And this is an opportunity to learn a little bit about the Strengths Profile Assessment as a development tool. 
the first 30 minutes is educational and is free. Uh, for those who want to actually take the assessment, they can remain for the rest of the workshop and uh, take the assessment and receive an introduction report, quick overview on it. The results are um, available immediately afterwards um, and some opportunities for what's next as far as use of the knowledge from that report. This is the Purple Connection. It's every third Thursday uh, and is a virtual event. Next. So the lineup for next month, Thursday, October 21st, I am still in progress to confirm our veteran entrepreneur, um, but our military support nonprofit presenter is George Bucati, who is an investment banker with over 30 years of experience. He'll, he's gonna be talking about a Greater Kansas City Veterans Loan Fund. Um, for folks who want to um, support it as a funder, as well as who the eligible people are for receiving a loan. The Military Friendly Company is um, going to be uh, co-founder of Rescore, which is the company that supports improving your credit score. And then our transition tip speaker is Teresa McGarry. She is the founder and um, executive director for a nonprofit that is about financial literacy She's got a show that she has. She is the host and creator for, and the topic of the month is credit and access to capital. For any information, for anything that's been presented, if you have interest in connecting with somebody who's on the call or within the Purple Connection community, drop me a line, send me a note, and uh, you can check out some of our online presence as far as what we're about. Next slide, last slide. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I really like this quote from Muhammad Ali, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. And I think everyone in the Purple Connection um, is a servant leader and uh, kind of puts into practice this quote in, that, in the things that they do. So thank you everyone for being here and I look forward to seeing you at a future event.